near my son and my grandchildren. I, I'm very excited if I get a chance to do that. And because he's thinking real serious now about he tried to sell his house he really hadn't. He's been fixing it up. He'd like to add some rooms onto it. And, and um, I think he may do that. It's got a big backyard and I'd like to go get one of them little log cabin um, I think they make some of them in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. A little log cabin, you know, about five, six hundred square foot houses, tiny houses, and, and put it on his lot there and, and live there with him. He, he wants that real bad. He'd like me to come up there and I may do that. It's, I mean, I'm, there's nothing really holding me here. I have, you know, step grandchildren, but those are my. Those are my actual grandchildren. And, and look, let's not. I love my grandchildren, okay, but they are. But and I have my stepdaughter stand here, and I love them to death. I just love them to death. But that's my son up there, and I hold a special place for him because he is from my from my dead wife, and um, those grandchildren and. They've been through a lot more than my stepchildren have, but um, just really sad. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to. I'm just going to go from there. All right. Let me get my. Uh, okay. Let me get my, my V tool now. And I. Okay. I dropped it in here. What did I do? Oh boy. I just had it and I dropped it in here. I tell you, I am a I'm kind of a goofy guy when it comes to a lot of things. Well what happened? I just grabbed. Is it covering it? Here it is. Yeah, there was something covering it and all. I'm just gonna go around here and just not gonna be any eyes. We're just gonna do a but yeah um, when we talk about carving and we talk about the history of it and we talk about where it came from and, 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 and it came way before I ever got involved in it, of course. But I'm talking about as a hobby. Wood carving at one time was not, was not much of a hobby. It was actually, a, people use it as a profession. They use it as a way to make money. Uh, we, most of us have jobs now, and we use it as a hobby. And uh, that's kind of like what Hobby Lobby you know, it's people have a lot of hobbies because they have spare time um, to do that. And they have uh, the great carvers like Andy Anderson, um, they, most of them, made their own carving tools. They wanted to carve, they couldn't go down and just buy like we're able to go buy. I mean, heck, you gotta, and the good basswood and all this, people just, uh, I remember talking to Pete Engler. Uh, many, many years ago, before he died, and uh, about, and he told me that uh, that he had, you know, most most of the wood that he used to carve with, he cut down and got from uh, the mills there, and and those type of things. So uh, we're we are we are available. Not only that, but kiln drying wood and. And they know how to do all those type of things, and and they, you know, we are we have available, and that's like I said, that's been uh, such a relief for us that want to just do it as a hobby, and even those that want to do it as a living. Uh, and as we all have seen, that people doing it as a living has just really bewildered. Uh, they do it over in Europe a lot as a living and, and they really they have very special carving schools over there and uh, I'll put this in between the legs for just a minute 
um, over in Germany and places like that. But once again, uh, it's mostly today, I, I, most of the money that is revenue is excuse me, revenue from carving is people who do it for a hobby. So um, there's, you know, and that's why magazines like there's a, there's a wood carving illustrated is so popular with the hobbyist who carves, and um, um, they did have there's a there's a magazine called Carving, and it's a European I think it's English magazine or whatever. And if you look at their magazine, it's a totally different format than Wood Carbon Illustrated. Um, it's it's actually it's the European type carvers, and there's more. There's not so much caricature as uh, I, I noticed in the Wood Carbon Ma uh, Illustrated magazine. It's a lot of caricature. It's a lot of showing people how to do caricature work, and and you know different little projects and stuff. Whereas the Carving magazine. Uh, which is very expensive, by the way. <laughs> you can buy it on, the, on, the, on some of the newsstands still around here, and you can actually get a subscription to it, but it is very expensive. Um, it's more architectural, like the European type uh, way they do things. So, um, there we go. Now we're getting the, that's the gist of it right there. So you can see the difference in the magazines uh, we used to have one called Carving Magazine, and it folded up. Something happened. I don't know what the deal happened. Um, so Wood Carving Illustrated is the biggest magazine around. And um, just like uh, we years and years ago, we had what was known as the uh, we had well Chip Chats has always been around, but Chip Chats was more of a uh, telling you about the shows that we're going to have and all that other stuff. Um, uh, but you had Chip Chats and you had what was called the Mallet Magazine, which was which had a lot of plans in them and stuff like that. So, so anyway, you had that situation going, and. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut these, these uh, uh, things in here just to kind of give it a... Um, so there was, there was a difference. So European carving and things like that are a whole lot different than, than uh, the, their outlook and those type of things. They're much more, uh, you know, realistic, architectural, things like that, in other words, than, than just caricatures. There's not a lot of, there's some caricatures every once in a while, but in most of those magazines, no. There's not a lot of caricature work and stuff like that. It's more um, uh, realistic or, you know, um, different stylized type carving and stuff like that. So you see the difference in American carving and um, uh, or the majority of people that buy wood carving magazine love characters work and are hobbyists. Like I said, we're over in Europe. Uh, they have schools that teach you to actually become professional wood carvers and uh, they are some very fine schools, very cultured, fine schools by very fine woodcarvers who learn the trade of doing, for money, architectural carving and uh, those type of things. Okay, I think we just about are getting to the, the, the area that we want to go on this little known. And... Um, as I said, I have changed the format up. We're, this, is, this is a format of where we're going to talk and whittle just like if we were sitting right next to one another and we're just talking about things. 
and uh, a lot of you I brought you back a little ways and all these soap operas and, but we're going to talk about different subjects we're going to talk about carving too but in order to understand the change in carving you have to understand the change in what what happened you know 50 60 years ago and that in 50 or 60 years once again we'll say that's not that long ago and the changes have been astronomical but in all fields medical all that stuff so uh, I'm gonna run okay I think we've got him pretty much stylized here okay let me run and wet him he's only about four inches tall we run wet him I'm getting old. I keep saying that. I'm going to keep saying it because I get older. Finish up. Uh, and the name of this is going to be Let's Sit and Whittle a Gnome. And there's our little gnome. There he is. Real simple project to do. Cut him out. And we just whittle a little gnome and sat and had a good talk. And we'll talk again. And like I said, I, I have changed my format at, well, from a, necessarily a teaching format to a uh, let's let's talk and whittle let's just talk and whittle let's 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 get to know one another get to know one another's past talk about whittling talk about carving talk about uh, um, I tell you what if we could see some of the old primitive tools the old carvers used to get things done we would just be shocked at some of them old tools they used um, but they got the job done. These, these men were very skilled laborers and stuff. I watched my own dad build things. He used to build boats. I mean, uh, and uh, he, uh, he was very good at it. And he just used it. A lot of it, a lot of these people could do it in their heads, you know. Uh, I'm not quite that good. Uh, it's like a lady told me the other day she said well her son her son has an IQ of 155 and I sat there and I, I looked at it for a minute I said wow that's pretty good she says you think so I said well yeah that's almost a hundred more than what I have so <laughs> she laughed <laughs> I think she got pretty tickled at that <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah it's it, it's different it's a different world that we live in. Um, uh, there's a song. It's a, it's a, it's a strange, strange world we live in. Master Jack is, and I can't remember the name of that song, but it's, I like it's a, it's a catchy song with a catchy tune, and uh, ne no words could have been better said than that. Because I tell you what. It's, it's a strange world, but it's, a, it's an amazing world. And uh, if God has blessed you with a uh, chance to carve and has blessed you with that, then just enjoy it, folks. Just enjoy carving. Enjoy having a good time with it. And I think that is the most important thing because anytime something becomes work, it... it um, it really is an issue and you don't enjoy it quite as much anymore but uh, just enjoy yourself have a good time and and if you can sit down with somebody like this and talk and whittle and carve and see most people 
one of the things I've learned is, is when people say, well, I can't carve or something without maybe the TV on or the music or something like that, all that tells me is that we are not creatures to be alone. We are not. We, we are creatures who want to have someone with them, and I know somebody can. And maybe these videos, as I sit down and we all talk together and just sort of carve, and it doesn't have to be a gnome. It could, you could whittle, sit there and, and get your stuff and whittle anything you want, in other words. But I notice that people like to have other, and even if there's no, no one around, then the, the music is somebody around. The music or the TV or something like that, um, that's why a lot of people will take and they'll just turn a TV on and uh, they won't even watch it. I used to watch people do that. They're turning TV on, but they'll, they'll never watch it. And you ask yourself, well, what do you turn the TV on if you don't watch it? It's just to hear another voice. It's just to hear someone. Now, to a lot of people, that's not their thing, okay? And I understand that. I understand they, they just want to see somebody carve. But to a lot of people, it is. And people say, well, I like to listen to music. Well, it's the same thing. It's the very same thing. Or I like to listen to TV. It's the same thing. You're hearing somebody else or something in that room that makes you feel that you're not alone. So, and as we talk, why not talk about some subjects and talk about carving and, and uh, talk about uh, some old times and stuff like that. And I'm sure your old times are different and whatever. There's nothing like sitting with a friend and carving, and I know a lot of you can, and I hope somehow that I can can be that that person that uh, you'll enjoy sitting carving and, and having a good time with, and and so we've got enough teaching formats now, and I've done that a long time, so this is going to be my new format, and even if we you're not carving a known. I am, and we can sit and have a good time. All right, well, God bless you now. Uh, may the good Lord bless you. May he bring peace and, and, uh, and goodness to your life. And, and uh, Because uh, I tell you what, uh, um, there's not a lot of it. I know in a lot of people's life right now and stuff. Uh, you know I work with a theater group, that, a small theater group, and we put on mostly comedies. Every once in a while we put on a drama like Agatha Christie or something, but most of the audiences like comedy, and most of the comedy that they don't have to do a lot of heavy thinking and stuff like that, because it just, it just makes them enjoyable. So God bless you now, and um, I hope the Lord blesses you, and may his peace be with you. Bye-bye now.